What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, we're back at Dealer's Auto Auction here in Oklahoma City for another walk around and maybe even a test drive or two. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. You know I can't help myself. When I see a Range Rover or Land Rover, I, I gotta come check it out. This is a little bit older. It's a 2014 with 69,000 miles on the odometer. Maybe this is a repo, maybe not, I don't know. It's definitely a smaller version, so this is probably a Sport. Maybe it's supercharged? Maybe it's not. We're going to find out as soon as we get around to the back here. Somebody plasti dipped the wheels. That's always not nice. This is supercharged. Yes, it is. I don't know very much about Land Rovers and Range Rovers. All I know is that I've owned quite a few of them, and I, I really like them. The, the only problem I have with them is that they're unreliable. They break, and, well, when they break, even if you do the work yourself, just ask Sam Crack, uh, they're still quite expensive. <laughs> like... They're still expensive to maintain, even if you do the maintaining yourself. And not particularly easy to work on either. Uh, I watched Sam crack about break his hand in an attempt to get injectors out of the cylinder heads on these. So yeah, it's definitely something to be aware of. This one smells really bad. Um, yeah, if I was to give you an example of what this one smells like, it's cigarettes mixed with a nice heaping helping of uh, a bunch of Beecham in a spittoon paired with some uh, stale Cheetos would be the best I could give you. All right, just imagine what all of that together smells like and uh, you've got the smell of this one. It's got an engine, so that's good. Unfortunately, when you Look at these, there's really not much to see. They, they throw plastic on everything. The hood struts are bad, so you know, I can't, I can't use my right hand because I'm holding the hood up. My left hand is holding the camera, so it's kind of difficult to really, I mean, do much under here. So yeah, it's got an engine, and uh, it, says it's, it says it's supercharged. Okay, well, so there's that. I wonder how much something like this would would go for, you know, at the dealer auction. We got another one right behind it. That's a 2015 Range Rover. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Well, I've got to look at that one, too. Uh, definitely got to look at both of them. That one's got 146,000 miles. This one's got 69,000. So this one, ooh, <laughs> the smell. Good. What? Maybe it's this. I don't know what that is, but it's rotting. You can clearly see mold. Yeah, it, whatever it is, smells, smells so bad. Oh, <laughs> typical Range Rover, right? 69,000 miles and it's broken. Full tank of gas and it doesn't run. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it almost ran. Ooh, there it goes. For a minute, I thought I was hearing rods knocking, man. Good Lord, that didn't sound good. Um, needless to say, the check engine light is on. That's, <laughs> that's not very surprising. I'm, I'm glad that it runs, though. For a minute, I really didn't think it was going to. Yeah, I'm gonna say for 69,000 miles, this one's this one's gonna be a little on the rough side, guys. Let's see if the power windows work. The important window works. Less important window. It works. All right. And back to the instrument cluster. Give it a little rev. Yeah, it, it sounds fine. It does. You've got this little touch screen here with a, with a camera. I wonder what happens when you push the camera. Oh, there you go. You can see cameras. Parking. Oh, oh, I, I smell head gasket. See, I tell you guys all the time that these things are notorious for head gaskets. And you guys come back in the comments and you yell at me. And you're like, I don't know where he gets his information from. Uh, Range Rovers, Land Rovers are not known for blown head gaskets. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, they are, because I can smell the head gaskets blown right out of the... Look at this. You know what that smells like? And yes, it's cold out. All right, I'll be in the first minute. It gets cold out. Sure, that could be condensation. Except, 
it is not condensation. No, you can smell the antifreeze blowing out the tailpipe of this thing with 69,000 miles on the odometer. What a shame, man. That's why it didn't want to start. It didn't want to start because it's got coolant washed up in the cylinders and it was trying to compress coolant. Guess what, guys? Coolant does not compress. Oh, that's sad. I bet it fires up now, though. Yeah, it fires right up. Um, man, this one, we're not going to test drive it. I was thinking about test driving because I was actually interested in this one. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Let me just put it in gear real quick. Stop that dinging. Let's, let's put it in drive. Make sure, you know, it's got gears. We'll make sure it goes forwards. It does. Brakes feel good backwards. Backup camera, yes. Seems good. You can actually look at the camera and you can see the smoke just blowing out of the exhaust. Like, just, just... Look at that. Just bellowing out of the exhaust. That is not condensation. Uh, man. You know, I'd almost be willing to take it on. Because you guys already know what I'm going to do. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do. I've got bottles of Blue Devil sitting on a shelf in the shop. And, you know, it's not sponsored. And I understand that it's a mechanic in the bottle and it's snake oil. I, I hear you. I hear you. I do. But also try to understand that I have used that stuff for many, 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 many years long before I was doing YouTube, guys. And I'm here to tell you. It actually works. It, it really does. As long as you don't have like a head gasket that is blown to pieces, it will get in there, patch it up, and you will get years more of life and thousands of miles out of your vehicle that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten without spending thousands and thousands of dollars on repairs. I've used it and it has worked for me many, many times. So I'm going to put this on my list because I don't feel like the head gaskets super blown on this one. And I say that because once it gets running, obviously there's a slow leak and the coolant is getting into the cylinders. I understand that, probably two cylinders most likely. Um, but once you get it running, it actually runs good. It's not misfiring, it's bellowing, bellowing smoke, but it billowing smoke, but it is not misfiring. That's usually a sign of a cracked head gasket, one that is not too blown. And something like Blue Devil would be perfect for this. So I'm still interested in this one. In fact, as soon as I get done taking a look at this one, we are actually going to uh, take a picture of that, uh, that lot number and everything so that I can put it on my list because the auction for these cars is tomorrow. Here we have a 2015. This one has 146,000 miles on the odometer. It is sitting on the ground. So air suspension problems are very likely on this. It does have some PPF on the front. Is this one supercharged? I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna, the only way I know is to walk around the back. And if it says supercharged, then it's supercharged. And this one is a Range Rover Sport Autobiography Edition, but this is not gonna be the supercharged version. Uh, which makes this one, you know, eh, not nearly as desirable. On top of that, it's a sport, and a lot of people don't care for the sports. And on top of that, it's got 150,000 miles on the odometer, and if that's not enough, it's also sitting on the ground. So it likely has some suspension issues as well. So otherwise, though, I mean, it looks exactly like the other one. We'll pop the hood. Oh, wow. No. Uh-uh. That's a, that's a no. <laughs> Flashing check engine light. Yeah, okay. Got it. That's... That's no good. Dang. <laughs> I could probably actually afford this one. <laughs> well, isn't that the way it goes? I guess we're stuck looking at this one, guys. And I don't know. What do you think? This one is definitely bigger. Like, this is this is a big Range Rover. This is a good size one. This is the one that, honestly, if I was going to go out and buy one, and I wouldn't because I'm not a fool. Um, no offense to those of you that go out and actually buy these things with real money. I, I don't get it. Um, but... 
This is the one I think most people would want. Honestly, it's sleek. It's the right color too. That black looks great. I don't care for the blacked out wheels, but you know, personal preference, whatever. Some of you are probably gonna like it. I think I like the factory look of the wheels better. Tires on this look absolutely phenomenal. It's got a bunch of scratches and scrapes and it wasn't, you know, cared for the best, but overall I think it looks pretty good. Why don't I, real quick, pull up the black book on this so I can get a better idea of what I would be looking at paying wholesale. And obviously with it billowing smoke out the tailpipes and with some of this damage like this right here, like the paint is literally coming off. These are all things to take into consideration, even though it's only got 69,000 miles on. This thing is in pretty rough shape. So I think wholesale is gonna leave us a lot of room to work with. All right, so Black Book Cherry shows the wholesale value on this, what you should expect to pay for this at an auction at around $22,000. Now, obviously there's no way, man. I, I mean, there's just no way. This thing needs so much reconditioning. Even if it didn't have problems with it smoking out the back, uh, there's no way this would be a $22,000 SUV, not in its current condition. You know, I would need to take those wheels in and probably just have them refinish, get all that stuff stripped off, get it back looking like it's factory again. You're gonna have to find some way of touching this mess up right here. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. I mean, the paint's just flaking and peeling. This should just be a separate plastic trim piece that you could pop out, sand it down, repaint it. Um, but I mean, even after you address all that, you, you still have the big problem, which is the fact that you've got smoke blowing out of the exhaust. It's gonna make it very difficult to sell um, anywhere. So, you know, here's what I'm thinking. People that are gonna be bidding on this, you're gonna see that smoke, you know exactly what it is because you can smell the head gaskets literally burning out of the tailpipes. You know, it's no, there's no doubt about what's wrong with it. And everybody's gonna know if you're gonna do this right, take it in, well, how much is this gonna cost you? You know, $6,000, $8,000, maybe they're gonna tell you the engine is bad and it's a $10,000 fix. That really is gonna hurt the value. And most people that are gonna be bidding on this are gonna to have to assume the worst. So if I could get this for $10,000, this one, I am now, all the other cars that I've looked at out here this week, I have now pushed them off, including the GTI. I'm no longer interested in the GTI. I'm actually interested in this Range Rover. Um, I think this is something that we could do if we could get it for 10, maybe $12,000 out the door. This is one I wanna to bring to the channel. And I wanna find out if Blue Devil can fix this $10,000 plus dollar engine. Oh boy. <laughs> what is this, a CLK and a Volvo sitting right next to it. This is a finance company, so most likely this is a repo with 226,000 miles on the odometer. Wow. According to this, it is a CLK 55. If that is true, I am very interested in this car. It is older, it's got high miles, it's rough. The window's left down. Does it even have a window? It does, it's got a window. The window is, has been left down. I would be very interested in this because this isn't going to bring anything. Nobody wants this. What dealership is going to put this on their lot? Well, mine. I, I would. I would put this on my lot. If it's a real CLK 55, I'm willing to bet you money somebody threw that sticker on there. It's probably a CLK 320. Let's open the hood. Let's, before we do anything, oh, it's got power. It's got power. Um, looking at the dash. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I, I, I don't think, I don't think there's anything special or unique about this car. I don't. But we'll find out. We're gonna find out right now. Are you as excited as I am? I'm, I'm actually kind of excited about this, guys. Uh, but I already know that uh, I'm about to get scammed. So, let's see. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Nope. Now listen, there is nothing wrong with a CLK 320. There is not, or an ML 320. There's the, the 3.2 liter is a phenomenal engine. It's, it's practically bulletproof. It's cheap and easy to maintain. Like you can work on this yourself. It's a great motor, absolutely love them. With that said, would I be interested in a quarter of a million mile CLK 320? No, no, I don't want easy to work on and cheap and reliable. I want lots of horsepowers, lots of Turks, and very expensive to maintain and impossible to work on yourself. So for that reason, I'm out. Sharks.
if you guys didn't catch the reference. Let's check out this Volvo next to it because everybody seems to love Volvo. I had one guy the other day, he actually told me he was unsubscribing from my channel because I hate Volvos. He said, I am leaving your channel because you hate Volvos. First of all, let me, let me, number one, you don't need to announce your departure. This is not an airport. Okay, if you want to leave, you, you can leave. Just push the button and, and walk away and you don't ever have to come back again. I appreciate the time that you spend watching and I appreciate it if you say subscribe to the channel. But with that said, um, you know, if you want to leave, don't let me stop you. Next, I never said I hate Volvos. Never, not ever did I say I hate these cars. What I said was, they're not my cup of tea. It's just not my thing. It's not that I hate them. I just don't particularly care for them. I, I've had a couple in my day and, you know, they were all right. And, and that's about it. They, <laughs> they were all right. Um, of course, all of mine have been, you know, much older, nothing newer. So, you know, maybe the new Volvos are a lot better or maybe they're not. It's just not really my thing. This claims that there is no odometer. So that's interesting. So it could have, you know, a million miles on it. Oh, and well, that's nice. It's also dead as a doornail. So we won't be able to look at this one at all. That's fine. We're gonna continue walking. In fact, I think I'm just gonna walk and see if I can find anything else instead of having you guys walk up this entire aisle with me. All right, I walked up and down the aisles and I didn't see anything on the other side that was worth looking at. So this is my favorite little section. These are all the repos. And I told you guys before, they're a mixed bag. You know, some repos, <laughs> they look like this. And I can almost guarantee you that this happened when the car was trying to get repo. I mean, I wasn't there. I don't know for sure. But people tend to have a really bad reaction when somebody is repossessing their car. And in a way, I understand. I had cars repoed when I was younger because I was very irresponsible with my credit. I was always buying things that I couldn't afford and inevitably the repo man would find me even though I hid the car, they would always find it and they would take it and I would be left walking again. Well, thankfully I don't do that anymore because I'm older and I've learned to be a lot more responsible with my credit. Even if you watch my videos and disagree with that, I do pay my bills right, at the end of the day. Well. Here's one thing that I just never did understand. I never destroyed the cars because they were getting repossessed. I knew that they were up for repo and yes, I tried to hide them for as long as I could, but I never went out and started beating up or smashing the car because it was getting repossessed. I, I just, that wasn't me. As irresponsible as I may have been, that just wasn't something I would have done. Um, why get mad at the car or why get mad at the bank or why get mad at the repo man? You're the one that didn't pay your bill. <laughs> you know, I, and I know I've seen a lot of comments from, uh, repo sympathizers. That's what I'm going to call them. Repo sympathizers. And they come at me like, yeah, the banks get what they deserve. Here's a great one. Here's my favorite, um, rebuttal to people destroying their cars when they're getting repossessed. My favorite rebuttal to that is, oh, that's what those banks get for their high interest rates. They're ripping people off with their subprime lending. Really? Really? Is that what it is? Are we now, this is what I love about a, a lot of things in our society today, is we have a tendency to blame the victims <laughs> and make it their fault and then we praise the people that are actually out there doing wrong the villains like we're out there praising villains and blaming victims you know i don't i don't i just don't know here's another one another repossession and this is this looks like when someone just they just they just went ham on it you know it, does subprime limit lending is, exist? Absolutely, man. There's there are banks out there that are charging people 21% interest on a car. Imagine $30,000 over seven years at 21% interest. 
Is that predatory lending? Yes. Do I agree with it? No. No, I don't. Obviously, I don't. But here's the thing. It's not the bank that forced the person to sign the contract. And I hear all the time, well, hey, Randy, people get desperate. They need a car. I understand. I do. Believe me. I Like I said, I've had cars repossessed in the past. I get it. You need a car, you know you can't afford it. You probably know from the beginning when you sign the paperwork that you're gonna take off with that car and run. Look, here's another one. Again, completely smashed up. This is a theme. So the bank did not force you to sign that note. Even, even if it was subprime, subprime lending at 21% interest, somebody had to sign that promissory note. Somebody agreed to the terms and said, I agree to buy this car and pay you for it, and then they didn't. So at the end of the day, is it the bank's fault because your credit was so bad that they offered you 21% interest because they knew you were probably not gonna pay your bills and run with the car? No, that's the cost of giving somebody credit that honestly doesn't deserve credit. And if you sign on that dotted line, that is not the bank's fault, that's your fault. And the people that think the bank deserves this, smash that car, teach that bank a lesson, you know what you're doing? You're actually hurting the rest of us. That's what you're doing. You're hurting everybody else. You think it hurts the bank? Not really. <laughs> and if it does, if anything hurts the bank, guess what? The bank is going to be kind enough to pass that hurt right on down the line to the next batch of consumers. You are not going to hurt banks. You will not hurt these lenders because if you do, they'll pass it on to the next guy and they will compensate for that hurt. So here's what ends up happening. You smash up your car, you destroy it because you're gonna teach that bank a lesson. Well, you didn't. In fact, you just hurt yourself even worse because they're gonna send that car to an auction just like this. All of these cars sitting here, these are all repossessions. All right, some of them looks like they were nice enough to let the cars go peacefully. Some of them were probably even voluntarily repossessed, meaning you can turn the car over to the bank, say, I can't pay for it, and you work out a deal with the bank to, to give them the car back peacefully. If you go out and you smash your car and you destroy it to teach that bank a lesson, <laughs> you screwed yourself. Because now, instead of this car bringing, let's say, $25,000 at auction, you smashed it. Now it's going to bring $8,000, $10,000 at auction because nobody wants it. It's, 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 it's a parts car now. Well, they're going to sell it for that $8,000 and then they're going to sue you for the remaining balance on your loan. And by the way, they will sue you with the interest continuing. In a lot of states, they allow that. In a lot of states, they will allow you to be sued and the interest continue compounding on the loan. So you hurt yourself. And you can say, well, I'm never gonna pay for it. Great, don't pay for it. It's going to stay on your credit and it's gonna make it very difficult for you ever to be able to get your act together, get your credit together, and be able to buy a house or go out and buy any other car at a reasonable interest rate. So keep that in mind. The bank didn't make you sign the paperwork. You didn't pay your bill. Your car got repossessed. All right, there's no reason to go outside and try to shoot or beat up the tow truck driver. What did he do? He has a job to do, all right? We all have jobs. Well, most of us have jobs. People are out there doing their jobs. You don't need to be going out there trying to cause them problems, all right? If you didn't pay your bills, that's on you and nobody else but you. It is not the bank's fault that you signed a note that you later decided or were unable to follow through with. And that's all there is to it. You will not convince me otherwise, and I do not partake in any of this crap that we see today of blaming the victim and the bank has enough money, they can afford it. Are you kidding me? The bank has enough money and they can afford it. You know how many people have said something similar to me? Well, Randy, you shouldn't worry about it. It's only a few hundred dollars, you make good money. What's a few hundred dollars to you? Well, I'm gonna tell you, I don't care how much money I make. I could make a million dollars in a year. And if I see $300 missing out of my bank account or if somebody takes $300 from me, I'm gonna notice it. I'm gonna figure out where it went. I'm gonna do whatever I can to get it back because I don't care how much money I make, $300 will always be $300. And to me, it will always be a lot of money. And I'm pretty sure the banks probably feel the same way. I don't partake in this blaming the banks because they had high interest rates. It is not the bank's fault that you had bad credit. It's not the bank's fault that you did not pay your bills. That's your fault. 
So to take it out on the car, it makes no sense. You smash your car, and then you get less money out of it at auction, which means you owe the bank more money with continuing interest on the loan that you didn't pay. All you're doing is making it worse for everybody else. With that, I'm gonna get out of here. I hope most of you agree with me. If you do, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know that there are still sane people that exist in this world, and it's not just me. Be sure to drop your comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.